excited. Unstoppable Tracy here from Podcaster Unstop the Story. And I have a fabulous guest. I have um, Michael Robinson. He is the fire chief of the township of Hamilton. And I have Jeff Terrell from Loblaw's World. Hello, gentlemen. It is so great to see you. Our camera and I'm going to show our Angela live in stream. Here she goes. And Angela may or may not pop in. We're going to give it a go. We And she is so beautiful. She is almost too beautiful for the camera. So the camera is like, oh boy, how do we just showcase this beauty guru in business? Angela is this retail guru that's focused on her beauty stream. And so she's going to play with her camera and her sound and fingers crossed we're able to hear her. But it is so fun to see both you gentlemen. And you're all a part of the quarantine secret reveal. We have Michael Robinson here, and right now he's fully masked with the Movember. And uh, Michael, will you tell us what Movember is? Sure, Tracy. So Movember is a, a fundraising campaign that uh, focuses on men's health, um, specifically uh, mental and uh, cancers, but certainly not excluded to just that. So yep. we have... Uh, had a challenge issued here within Northumberland County from one of the local fire departments. And uh, we are proud to say that we are number two and number three in Canada uh, for two of our rural fire departments, only only behind the uh, city of Toronto. So some great things have happened out here locally. And when, when you're ready, I will, uh, I'll do the reveal and I'll show you some sick chops and uh, mustache. Oh my gosh. And, and I don't know if folks can notice behind his head, he has uh, the, you know, the, the logo, the, the moment Movember mustache. And I was asking Jeff if he was part of Movember. And uh, right now that is just his handsome mug. Uh, he is naturally with his beard and his, his bits and pieces. Yeah, I think I said I've just been growing my back here in support of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might ask you to refrain from doing the grand reveal of your back hair. Uh, it's okay. I have no interest in revealing that. <laughs> <laughs> we put it in the chat. You know, if you want to see it, you put it in the chat and we'll see. See, or if people are saying, no, please don't. Don't do that yeah. grand reveal. I will speak on behalf of everybody. My, my yes. COVID jiggle in the wiggle is... Uh, <laughs> greater than it was uh, pre-COVID. So no, there'll be no shirtless pictures today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because this is a leadership Facebook Live. We are supposed to keep it a little bit professional. <laughs> I would think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I um, I see Angela's trying to share her screen, but my mouse is frozen. So, oh, oh, there we go. So I'm going to kick out one Angela and I'm going to invite a new Angela and see uh, if we're... If the new Angela is able to not, she's able to share her screen, she said, which is kind of a neat. Angela's ready to join your broadcast. Fabulous. We just we just keep popping her in and out because Angela's excited to see Michael's mustache, right? He, this is this is because of quarantine. Nobody, he's growing. It's like Movember, but nobody's actually seeing the Movember stash grow over the days uh, during this time. And so I think now is the time because if there's nobody in your office and you don't have to be quarantined with your mask at the moment, we're we're gonna we're do a drum roll. I don't know if people can hear that on camera. Dun dun dun! Woo! Look at wow. those chops! <laughs> that is so fun. I love it. The sideburns and the fancy cut and the full on, and you know the photo that I used for Mike. I think you were telling me was the first day on the job, your youngest photo. I, it was twenty. It was probably twenty years ago that photo. So oh, you're kidding! You close like to it. it, yeah. Twenty. I'm in my twenty-first year, so. Holy um, cow! Wow. Yeah, I was. It was a young, young recruit, a young rookie in that picture. Oh my well, you gosh! Aged well, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Jeff, how long have you been at Loblaws? Um. Well, I, I started with Shoppers Drug Mart uh, 2007, February, and uh, I've just grown with the company uh, since then and through the through the transition of blah, blah, taking over Shoppers and all of that. So it's been a very interesting journey. 
It sure has been. Yeah. And and that's where Jeff and I met. Jeff and I met at Shoppers Drug Mart in the halls and the elevator. And I think I did your, I even might've done your onboarding, your orientation potentially when you started. Um, a few people, a few people from the team. I think I had started just before you. Uh, okay. The way we met was you had called me up to arrange some training for the team. And I'm, I'm like, who is this bubbly person on the line? I think, I think our personalities are a match, right? So yes. From, from that day forward, we just kind of hit it off. I mean, with your positive energy and everything else, it makes it very easy to interact with you. So. That, Thank you for well, that in the day. And I know the people on the team, they really appreciated your approach to the training. So it was awesome. You're so kind and so formal <laughs> right now. It's so sweet. It's really fun to see the, <laughs> the fancy side. And that's, and go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say, that's a great story to start off of how we all know Tracy Smith. Yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so mine, mine, mine actually happens at a pool party in the summer <laughs> at, uh, at my family residence. And so we we had a uh, we used to call it an arse party, which was the uh, which which was the annual Robinson summer event. And uh, at the annual Robinson summer event, uh, Tracy was a guest, and I was introduced early in the early in the day. Hey, hey. there she is. We Angela, we are so glad you joined us. I finally got a guy. Sorry about that. Technology. <laughs> <laughs> this is all about grand reveals. We did the grand reveal of Michael's mustache for November. It is it is a mustache. Dirty, yeah. We've yeah. done a mini reveal with uh how Jeff and I knew each other from Shoppers Drug Mart. Okay. And we're just doing a round robin, Angela. And Mike is in the middle of giving a grand reveal of the really crazy way he and I met. I can't believe he's sharing this story. I love it. It's perfect. <laughs> So we just, so, we, we politely were talking about the arse party. You've probably been at one or two of those. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Tracy's there as a guest and, and I'm introduced to her early on in the day as a guest. And as the evening goes on, there's, there's lots of playful time in our family pool and uh, things kind of quiet down towards the end of the afternoon. And, and Tracy uh, calls me over and she says, I would really like to get in the pool and go for a swim. So I'm like, so I'm okay, in car, right? And, and, and so in. out to the car we go, and we prep her for uh, swimming, and she hops on my back, and of course I ball day, been throwing people in the pool and cannonballing and stuff. So so Tracy's on my back, and we're walking back to the pool, and I I go to go to the shallow end of the pool to walk her in, and she taps me on the shoulder, and she says, no, 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 over the side like everybody else, cannonball <laughs> in. So flying off the side of the pool, go go Tracy and I, and. We swam probably for the next hour in the pool, and that is how I got to, to know Tracy. <laughs> that sounds that sounds like a Tracy story. <laughs> Come on, right? And and I let go almost just before we hit the water. So, like, we were, like, midair and, like, these two bodies. It was so great. But, you know, so he is fire chief of the township of Hamilton, which is out uh, east way, not actually Hamilton West. And we often we often get confused for the city of Hamilton, but we are the township. We're about an hour and 15 minutes uh, east of Toronto, uh, just between Coburg and Port Hope, just north of there. Just north of there. And 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 so his dad, Mike's dad, was a fire chief. And this party is all his family. And so it's pretty funny because he's, as you said, 21 years in the fire industry. And now he's fire chief for at least three, four years now. Yep. Yeah. And uh his mom was there and he's skipping that part. So if you're going to totally embarrass me, I got to embarrass you for sure and say that his mom, she's like, Michael, come here uh, on the side of the pool. And he goes over to the side of the pool to find out what happened. And his mom grabs the ear of the <laughs> fire chief, right? And she grabs his ear like a naughty little boy, but now he's this grown man, fireman. And she practically pulls him out of the pool by his ear and saying, what are you doing to that poor girl? And how dare you dive on her? And he got like ripped to shreds in front of the entire party because his mom was so worried about me. <laughs> yeah. It was hilarious. <laughs> oh, so Angela. Hi. <laughs> we are so glad that you were able to do the grand reveal. And this is the, you know, the grand entrance. When somebody comes to the ball, 
and Cinderella walked in and they introduced her and we all get to see it's almost like <laughs> the, the the bonus and you are this retail guru with your subject matter expertise and authority in the beauty industry yes. for well over 20 years there's this theme he's a fireman for over 20 years you're in the beauty guru world for over 20 years but how did you and I meet do you remember so I actually don't remember this specific event, but I know it was through Donna and Michael because they're yes. obviously family friends, but it was probably about six or seven years ago. I believe I was at one of your a, a fundraiser and I met you there and um, have followed you ever since. And obviously have always inspired me uh, in all of your leadership um, abilities and always uh, willing to take on anything and everything ah. like your story <laughs> swimming. Yeah, right. It's kind of fun that he did this action story. So, Angela, I would like you to meet my extraordinary friend from my Shopper Drug Mart days, who's now working at Loblaws. But this is Jeff oh, Terrell. Oh, this is Angela. Yes. Hi, Angela. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Our worlds are so small because we probably know a lot of the same people. It's it's very possible. It, it yeah. is a small world. Uh, yeah, it's a, I've, I've been at, uh, I started with Shoppers Drug Mart, uh, 2007. And uh, okay. so it's been, uh, been an, an interesting path actually. At, uh, yeah. Shoppers Drug Mart actually used to be one of my great partners, um, in a prior life in cosmetics with Estee Lauder, uh, cosmetics. I used to work for them for seven years and, um, I was one of the ones, uh, account executives that took Estee Lauder into Shoppers Drug Mart. It was something very new and exciting for the brand. They had never been wow. in that kind of mass market. Market, so I worked really closely with a lot of people from Shoppers Drug Mart. So, well, when was that? Amazing. Yeah, so that um, that was probably about ten years ago. Estee Lauder is probably celebrating around the tenth anniversary of going into um, Shoppers Drug Mart. I've been with Lapri now for eight years, um, but I have been in beauty, the beauty industry or retail for the last twenty. So, oh yeah. And it's a small world when you're in retail, especially beauty. But it's definitely a small world in retail. We, we a lot of us know each other. Especially right? Canadian retail, it's a yes. it's a very small community, right? So yes, it's, uh, exactly. I love retail, though. It's uh, it's been in my blood since I was a kid, hanging out at shopping malls and working my first jobs and stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, retail, right? But it's um, I, I have a passion for it, right? I, I I love the whole concept of getting uh, getting things into the consumer's hand that they need when they need it. Stuff like that. Well, fun. the great thing, it changes every single day. I think from a yeah. young child, I had no idea the passion that I had. Uh, my grandmother worked at Holt Renfrew in the fur and bridal department. Oh, wow. Uh, and so as a young child, I was exposed to it and had I, no idea what she was doing to me. But she was obviously setting me up for my future career to be uh, great partners with Holt Renfrew, um, but also to be, you know, be passionate about beauty and fashion and the fast pace of that life. Retail changes every single day it's a different day every single time you wake up um your to-do list changes throughout the day by the minute um if you're in the back of the house or the front of the house it's it's definitely exciting and i think that's what you all have in common is that like like obviously jeff and angela are in the retail world but that so there's that change every single day and then jeff scott and you've both been through big extraordinary you went from one company estee lauder to now with la prairie mm -hmm. with customers like holt renfrew but and jeff's went through a big transition with loblaws now being you know you you same same place but in a whole new world yeah. and then yeah. michael is with like you never know when there's going to be a fire and you got to go. So you never know what your day is going to look like. But if I could give the floor to Jeff for just a little bit to just expand a bit on, on what your journey's been. Ah, well, you know, I, I started at, uh, at shoppers. I was a team leader at the, at the service desk. And that was a, that was a great experience. And I, I grew with them. I'd been a project manager in past lives and this was an interesting, different challenge and sort of grew with the company, got into designing some processes. Um, you know, and as, as you live, live a role within a company and run projects within a company, you start to establish contacts and, and those, I think contacts are the grease on the wheels that, that make projects succeed, right? And the, the, um, the relationships that you foster. So I was, I, you know, here I am, a, a medium-sized fish in, in the medium-sized pond of uh, Shoppers Drug Mart. <laughs> yeah. And then um, Loblaw came and, and bought uh, Shopper. So it was a very exciting time. Um, but also it, it's a nervous time because you, you, you don't really know how that's, that's going to pan out. I will say, though, 
Um, they did a great job, uh, both shoppers and Loblaw, working together to make all of us feel um, heard and welcomed and everything else. Um, but what I noticed was a paradigm shift in trying to get things accomplished. Um, I was seeing processes that I had created, implemented, getting scrapped. Right. And so I was struggling with ego with that and, and everything else. And I thought, you know, I have got to figure out a way to to kind of let this go and embrace the change because you, you, you can only control yourself in a situation. You, you can't control the change that's coming at you. You need to be able to assess it. So I had to really think about, like, how do I approach this? Like, I'm, I'm used to asking people to do things and then we work on it. And it gets done. Now I have to sell myself i have to sell the concept i have to sell 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 and it was it was hard to figure out um and so what i did is i spoke to other people that had worked within lava for for quite some time and i discovered <laughs> that what they were saying for keys to success are things that i practice in any new job and then i started to approach it like hey i just got a new job without having to interview for it and gosh darn it they want me so now i just got to make it happen right and so i started doing my king of kings <laughs> you things get walking around hey how are you? hi i'm jeff i just started here blah 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 blah. you know so like kind of <laughs> you know, start start reestablishing some some new relationships and refiguring out the processes and one thing one thing that i've discovered working with with lava it's it's, it's really a, a very positive environment and um so they they've been i, I would say the the atmosphere there, the the overall feeling of working there is is one of uh, you're heard and it's one of teamwork. And so I think I think the senior management being so agile to uh, our our needs and everything really helped throughout throughout the process. And it's one thing I don't think I've ever worked at a company where I've seen them so uh, so interested in how you are doing as an individual, apart from just what you're delivering. So that combined with my new outlook treating it like a like a new job new let's job. make some new context um and and the, the key things are you know deliver on what you say you're going to do adapt and be open to change and be positive right and care about the people around you and if you operate from that perspective you're going to get things done and people won't feel beat up uh, by you when doing it and it's more of a, a teamwork approach so so by just kind of reshifting it was a perspective thing i had to let go of my ego forget about the accomplishments that i made well not forget about them but just kind of tuck them in my belt maybe mention them later oh you know i designed that process for scrapping right or, or something like that right yeah but um so so that helped me uh shift and, and refocus, and I, I think uh, I think it's set a positive path uh, for for where I'm at now. Oh, absolutely! Well, you know, before the invite, when Jeff and I was talking, I was like, you know, everybody knew Jeff. There, there was something like forty thousand employees, and I, I don't know what four hundred fifty of them in the building, and I think four hundred and forty nine of them knew Jeff because he was such a relationship guy, and we were alike. They knew Jeff and Tracy, I guess, right? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> And so I couldn't imagine moving and then all of that big, extraordinary network disappear. Uh, but that whole, even Loblaws wanting to buy Shoppers Drug Mart was because we increased food and we increased all those convenience items and all those baby items, but we also increased all of our beauty items, right? And so there was way back when a pharmaceutical reform where 55% of our profits were pharmaceuticals and then overnight, the government changes that funding structure. But what happened is we still outperformed the stock market because gurus like Jeff and his project management helped when the powers that be strategized the pivot for beauty, for food, for baby. That, And then it was like, okay, make it happen now. Well, you, IT doesn't <laughs> normally work like that. We are like, we need a big 12 month planning process and vetting process. Like who can, who can create these new ways? And uh, I think it was Jeff's relationships. Well, I think, I think that's, I think that's very kind, Tracy. They, there's, oh. a, there's a lot of really smart strategists behind that. I am one tiny cog in the engine and I'm oh. really not even authorized to speak on it. All that I can say is Despite the challenges and everything else, um, I would say working for Law Law, but still reporting into shoppers has been a very positive experience. And I'm, I'm really excited about where things are, are going. Um, I can't really speak much to the things that we're working on or, or anything internally. No, no. Acknowledging that I work at Law Law. 
Yeah. I work at Love Lesson. They are positive. You know, with a weird coincidence. Uh, yesterday, I was at Loblaws headquarters on on one. What is it? President's oh, Way. President's one President's President. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was in the basement because they have a big studio and a green room and cameras oh, and yeah. all this fancy yeah. equipment. And so I spoke to their wholesale way day, uh, power of positivity. And and so Loblaws has another subsidiary, the Shopper Shark Mart's one of them, and Wholesale Way is another one. It's kind of like Costco for restaurants, another retail that's really impacted by the pandemic. But I really felt that teamwork and positivity and leadership were there in the room uh, as well. Like it's everything that you said it was and more. Uh, and so now I feel like we had a little time from Angela and I want to go to Angela because we're talking uh, retail and we opened with the mustache reveal. But, you know, are you as a fire chief, you're not in the retail world, you're in a different world, but you are certainly feeling change. So do you do you did Jeff's story kind of spur anything that you wanted to throw into the mix here, Mike? Um, I, I think the common piece here is we all have customers. Um, yeah. our customer is a little bit different, um, but, but we're funded through, through a tax levy and we have customers and our customer service piece is, is a big part of our business. And, and we are very clear as managers in the fire service, right down to our suppression staff, we all have customers. And, and in these times of need that we're, we're in right now, our challenges have been completely different um because our you know I'm, I'm proud that i've been able to come to work every day during covid i have not worked one day from home um but but it's been trying times and we've been leaned on even harder as a service um the demands have been greater and and in rural ontario i mean i i don't i don't work a lot in in the the, the bigger centers but i've really seen a reset and i've really seen people and community come back in as one of the positives through covid and and I, I feel in a lot of ways we've we've taken a generational step back. Um, simple things like people wanting to bake cakes, um, uh, yeah, make home preserves, um, decorate, take on tasks that they never took on. I, I really think there's a positive for that reset. So um, it, there's been a lot of demand from us, and 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 there's been some challenging times. Um, but I think I think Ontario. Uh, should be pretty proud of what they've done, and then and then through our regions, um, it's been a pretty amazing time to to be in the emergency service. Uh, and and you know you talk about financial strife and bankruptcy and layoffs and things going on, and and all four of us are lucky enough to be still working, which is incredible. And it's funny you say you're in your office, and the three of us are broadcasting in from our home environments, right? As you said, yeah. But you, Mike, you've raised not you personally, but like you are part of this team that have raised like 15,000, I think for Movember. Well, we're, we're well over 20. Yeah. We're wow. over 20,000 now. That's awesome. And the, and the Crazy. neighboring department is, is over 20. So combined we're over 40. Um, and, and this is in Northumberland County. So, Amazing. and, and really, and really all that was is a vision of a few key people, um, that grab to grab 60 brothers and sisters in our case, and um, we, we started looking for ways to to raise funds, think outside the box, adapt and overcome. Um, and then that's truly what, what this has been. Uh, and, and the success of this fundraiser has, has, has just been unbelievable for us personally. And I think, you know, everybody's been looking for a life raft as we've gone through this yeah. storm we call COVID. And, and I think this was just another example you know, if it was something that you could just focus your attention on or take your mind off of it yeah. or something positive, it's just brought everybody together as a team um, and allowed us to to do something different aside from our everyday life. And, and you know, you'd like to say that you'll build on it and it could be bigger and better next year. Uh, I, I don't know what that looks like, but I know right now that it's the buzz that's around the station. Uh, we have till midnight tomorrow night to finish up our, our campaign for our personal challenge uh, as of Monday, uh, November, obviously, November 30th is, is over. Uh, we have one more live streaming event that we're doing tomorrow, which which you'll probably see come up in some of the news roll. And it's just an exciting time. And and the interagencies, even in that, we have brought in uh, the EMS, the policing world, 
um, they work closely with us through this. And I'm, I'm really excited for tomorrow when some of the materials we have and, and the teamwork that's that's been part of this. Oh, and, and just for context, for people just joining us now, hence the ears. It's, they're not ears. You give them a little. It's a Movember staff. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's oh. last year's mustache, isn't it, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, just, I just cut it off and posted it. Dude, I didn't get it quite as quite as wide this year. So, <laughs> so please support. I'm going to go in and add those links. And I have been adding his link everywhere I could. And I will again after this is over. And support Michael's Movember fundraising for this. And, and context, like that is, I mean, you don't feel small town. But Northumberland County is not Greater Toronto Airport. No, it's, it's small airport. town. And, and, and yeah. to reiterate, reiterate, the top team in Canada right now is, in fact, Toronto Fire. And, and ourselves and Alwick Haldeman, and, and I don't even know because it's changing by the minute. We're two and three, but I don't know who's two and who's three, but two and three are sitting here and, you know, we call it rural Ontario. Um, and, and really all it is, it's it's just the passion of, of that group and some of the leadership and, and, and just that team and really how it's come together. Oh, it's phenomenal, Mike. And, and Angela, so you come with this retail guru life. And it's a real passion and sub subject matter expertise around beauty, but you yes. connect with Jeff's business and you live sort of out Mike's way and lifelong friends with Mike, which is just a bonus coincidence on this leadership visit with everybody for some laughs. But, you know, what's coming to mind for you when you listen to Mike and you listen to Jeff and you are like living through these times right now? Yeah, so I started, I think, to, I agree to, with Michael, it's all about people. We all are passionate about what we do, and it happens to involve people and change. I think we're all positive people, and I think that's how we've been able to be resilient and adapt and pivot probably on a daily basis, every single one of us. Yeah. Um, you know, mine's not life-threatening. Um, it's not brain surgery selling lipsticks, but I'm still very <laughs> passionate about it. And um, I will say it helps make some very happy homes with happy wives or happy women so um you know happy, there's life, there's happy life you know happy life. <laughs> um, and I shouldn't just say women it's men too because uh, you know I do have about 20 percent of a, a customer base that is men based as well so um I think my world changed a lot I went from flying up to 75,000 miles a year up until March got grounded March 14th and um all of a sudden I'm home yeah in my house that I've I've not spent that much time in with a 21 year old university student and an 18 year old high school student um, that I'm seeing 24 seven um, that they're used to having some, you know, some time when mom's traveling, some space and all of a sudden we're in a, in a house all together working uh, long hours and learning how to pivot through all of this. So I think, you know, as I said, resilience is really key to all of us throughout these times. Uh, my, my life has been pivoting probably by the hour, the last week or two, again, with the second shutdown in Toronto and Peel. Um, but I also have a market. I have all of Canada. And so I'm keeping an eye on Vancouver and Calgary and making sure just my people, I have two customers. I have the people that work for me Wait. and the, and I have the client base as well. Right. And oh, looks oh. like some audio yes. problems here. There we go. Wait, we we yeah, got and, a couple of your words, Angela. Sorry. Oh, I think we got them all, but I just have one question for you, Ange. Yeah. I recently picked up some La Prairie product and I've been using it the last couple of weeks. I'd, this is the first you've seen me. Is there any? Is there any change? Is the cream Imagine. working? Yeah, it looks fantastic. Probably Mike. about six so years fantastic. younger, but we're yeah. aiming for ten years younger. Okay, so just keep using it. Yeah, keep on using day and okay. night after you wash your face. You're good. Yeah. All right. I think, good. And, and just make sure you're wearing your sunscreen every day, please, Michael. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Angela, you must. Hence, say, why you, you look so young in your season. fireman photo that I used. <laughs> you look twenty that's years right. younger in that fireman today. photo. Yes. yes. So Angela, you must do uh, some interesting analytics to understand where the where the sales are and, and things like that, which is of interest to me because I'm I'm actually in the analytics area of uh, Yeah, we we definitely we get a lot of data throughout the world globally uh, because we are a global company. Um, the bonus about that is that we really do see shopping behaviors throughout the world and how dramatically a different it is even from even a Canadian to US based. Um, mm -hmm. I am a US based company. Uh, we are from Switzerland. The global office is in Switzerland, but the 
um, satellite office for us is in New York City. So I spent an awful lot of time in New York. Um, I do actually spend most of my time probably fighting for uh, Canadian, um, you know, programs or understanding the customer in Canada because it's dramatically different in the U.S. So one thing that would be so um, dramatic that would make sense to everyone in this time is that um, Canada is probably only four to six percent shopping online um, population wise, where in the States, it could anywhere, depending on the state, it could be anywhere from 10 to 25 percent that that client wow. is shopping online. So Canada is still all about that touching and feeling and going in and shopping and building the relationship. Um, you know, we're online. You you disconnect and we're a passionate brand. We're a passionate product. Um, there is some motions behind it. And so it tends to be a little bit more difficult to shop online. But we are seeing that grow. Um, over COVID, uh, we have definitely seen um, a great increase in even more rural areas um, that maybe would used to do a big trip into the um, Toronto or a big trip into Montreal to do a shopping maybe once every couple months. They're now able to or feel more comfortable shopping online. So that's probably the biggest one that analytics wise, we're slowly growing in Canada with the online. Um, but the demographics in our world is so vast. Um, in beauty and it could be from one brand to another on what your demographics is either age um or culture or anything like that so wow so so we've seen a push we've seen a push here in rural ontario um you know the buy local and i think that's something that you know we've identified and i think it's by region i mean we identified it as a country then we identified it as a province and we identified it as a region so have you angela seen a change and, and again i i don't know your business so i don't know even know exactly where your products come from have you had smaller retail businesses or some of those businesses actually excelled or, or sales gone up because people are doing exactly what you said? They're not going to the bigger centers? Yeah, so Whole Renfrew is actually the only Canadian retailer that's still um, truly Canadian. Um, so we actually have seen this... Um, migration to actually support Colt Renfrew and they've been phenomenal um you know Jeff obviously it's it's owned by the Westons as well they've been a phenomenal employer uh, throughout COVID and taking care of their people and I think that's you know been a big push for us in any form of media to kind of communicate that they are definitely one of the companies that in Canada were really supported through everything the changes and so we actually have seen some increased um buying in in actually Holt Renfrew so a lot of our customers are traveling customers they usually shop in duty free and now they're choosing to you know support their local beauty visor and it's not necessarily maybe the local retailer but it's actually their beauty visor and their livelihood because they do live in um you know eat and you know entertain in this area in toronto or vancouver or montreal so there's been a huge shift in that we've definitely seen that oh interesting that, that's very interesting actually I, I love I love statistics. I, I usually will base uh, my decisions in business off of uh, analytics. It's uh, it's the wisest approach. You know, you take an educated approach and identify what lines up best with the strategy you're looking to employ. And it's a it, that's that's one thing. When I'm doing analytics, you could literally burn the house down around me when I'm staring. And I wouldn't even know. I, I excellent. That's what my decision is. Where'd the house go? You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I come in, right? Most of us, most of us want to save the family heirloom and the special stuff. You want the analytic paperwork, make sure it gets out of the house. I got it. I'll be sitting there with smoking all around me and I'd just be, what happened? You know? <laughs> oh, that's great. See, it's saving lives. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. That's amazing. Yeah, uh, kind of off topic and circling back to before when Mike was talking about what's happening in the fire world and and who you're, you're seeing an increase in business and what's going on. Uh, an interesting fact for me is, you know, when my dad had a heart attack, it was the firefighters that were first at my home. And they were the ones that were extraordinary in soothing my mom and being a lifeline that way, uh, which was amazing. Uh, and the police, it was a long time. And maybe the police were slower because they knew firefighters were on scene, potentially, like even before ambulance. Uh, and maybe it's just the way it rolled out that particular night. Uh, but that's, you know, that customer service. We often forget you need skills on how to put out the fire or what's oil or what's wires or all the, the technical bits, but it is such a human business. It's kind of neat that you tied that in for all of us. 
and, and, you know, we're on this analytics theme and we want to keep Jeff motivated. <laughs> are there, are there analytics or tips or tricks that you want to share at this time where people are cooking from home more and using more candles and anything like that, that you want to educate or get out there on top of Movember as a fire chief? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, as you can appreciate, um, we are, we are traditionally bedroom communities as we call them. Um, there's a lot of people don't work or play uh, in this area. So what we have seen is just more time spent at home um, and people working from home. And yes, there has been an increase in, in some of the, you know, the types of fires that you wouldn't always see through, through the day. It would be more stuff you'd see, you know, evenings and weekends. Uh -huh. um, when, when COVID initially hit, uh, I think it was kind of a pattern across the province that our call volume really dropped. Um, it, uh, it, it was only after we kind of come out of that first phase and people started moving around and moving about a bit that our, that our calls returned. And I think some of that was, um, you know, we were being super cautious. Um, some people were, I think, maybe not making a call to the EMS world and police and fire and ambulance because they were handling some stuff themselves. And now, and now we see things have kind of, you know, rebounded and, and our call volumes there, but, but not unlike my, my two peers that are here, analytics drive our world. Uh, we watch call volumes, we watch, we watch types of calls, and there's some really uh, neat modeling that goes into, into the fire service that, that drives our job um, and, and what we need and what we do. I think what makes us unique where we are is that uh, back to the customer piece, uh, we know pretty well each and every one of our customers. Mm. So we know them as family, we know them as neighbors, we know them as brothers or sisters. Ooh, and so I have, I have 60, I have 60 staff uh, and, and every one of them are volunteer part-time uh, firefighters. And there is a connection, nine out of 10 of our responses, there's a connection back that somebody knows somebody, uh, oh. whether it's family or friend of a friend. So oh. that, that does add stress oh. to us, um, oh. uh, you know, pre COVID and then on top of um, our day-to-day -day business. And, and at the start it was the unknown. And I think that's probably a common theme that we all have here. It yeah. was different for each one of us, but we all went into this saying, wow, how, how is this going to change our life? How is this going to change our job? Are we going to have a job? I mean, that was, you know, that was the number one thing. And then, and then you really quickly had to become that chameleon and you really had to start adapting to your environment. And, and Angela talked about it being daily. I would say in the emergency world, our, our life was changing probably on the 15 minute or on the half hour or on the hour. And we basically were just taking the best information that we had and kind of rolling with it. And, and if you look at everything from our, our protective personal equipment that we started out with to where we are now, to our processes, to how we were running calls, it's changed dramatically since March. And it seems we've kind of got it now in a holding pattern of something that we can, you know, we can adapt with and go with, but I'm sure for everyone, it was the unknown. It was the, you know, well, what are we getting into? What, what's the other end of it? And we're, and we're certainly not through it. No, no. I, I think that's amazing, Mike, because I, I mean, even at the beginning when we didn't know everything that we know now about COVID, that must have been quite, uh, quite nerve wracking going to a site and showing up to, to the station and everything. So, I mean, that, that's, yeah. that's incredible, right, that, that you guys uh, were able to persevere through that. Um, I, I'm blown away by that. I mean, myself, my wife and I, we've, we've been fortunate. We spent most of our, the 60% of our time working from home before COVID. So we've only been impacted by staying at home. And I know for myself, the concept of going into the office was almost terrifying. You know, I've, I've got my mom who's fighting cancer and things like that. So I have people at risk. So I, I'm blown away. Were there any kind of tips that helped you through it or, or anything? Um, I, I think it, we generally use that motto. We kind of expect the worst and anything that comes better than that, that that's that's kind of, I think, a common uh, thought process that we have, you know, expect the worst and anything else that comes of it. So really, uh, I think maybe the paradigm shift was where we went into situations and we ramped up to it. We, we worked the other way this time. We were at we were at red and then we worked back. Whereas before you kind of, so a little bit of a switch in paradigm there. So yeah. you went in with absolutely the best protection that you could and you went in reverse. Whereas before we might've ramped up to that. So yeah, and, until we kind of, we got to know it. Um, but, but also what made us unique was each and every one of our responders have an additional job or they have, and, and they certainly have family and friends. So 
we're pulling people from other places of employment here locally, um, potentially exposing them and then sending them back to their families and sending them back to their place of employment. So we did have, we did have an impact in our response and rightfully so. We had certain people that, that may or may not show up because they had to worry about their livelihood. They had to worry about their family. They had to work, you know, worry about how they were impacting things. So we had to, you know, we had to do a little stick handling there and, and a little skating around things as, you know, true Canadians do in our hockey theme um, to, to get through it. But it, and it was to make our people, um, you know, comfortable. And, and right at the start, all of our training shut right down. Um, so then we had to find ways to connect with our group. And I think that is another common piece and you guys, I think we're, we're awesome at it in your business. I'm, I'm hearing your stories of how you come to be. Um, and we were decent communicators, but I think we've probably communicated better as a fire service internally since March because we got people on Zoom. We got people hooked up through phone calls. People just picked up the phone and said, hey, how's it going? Because we weren't having that day-to-day -day contact that we were used to. So I think, you know, in the positives of it, the communication piece, three-way communication is always what we talk about and having those conversations and, and obviously on, on the heels of Movember and, and the plug that Tracy has and the influence that she has on all of us in the mental health piece, that's been huge. That's been huge through this. Check in, make sure you're communicating, make sure that, you know, you, you know what's going on here. And um, I think that's one of the positives that's come and then, and then keep that community mindedness and then make sure that we're, we're doing as much preventative um, that we can do. And uh, after the call is a great company that we work work with and I put a plug in for them. And we've, we've worked in a number with, with of, of our scenes and incidents with them. But I think we're really starting to see a shift in EMS of a preparedness. So a lot of our world, a lot of people don't understand in the fire service, 90% of our business is supposed to be prevention. But yeah. the fun part of the 10% is the red trucks and the fires and all the rest. And, and, and we as chiefs have a saying that if the doors roll up and we have to respond, we failed. That's a failure for us because oh. we are now in a reactive state instead of a proactive state. And I think when I look at the mental health piece that we're trying to promote, I think that's exactly where we are. If we're going to take treatment, if we're actually, uh, you know, seeing counselors because we're affected, then we're in a reactive state. So we have an opportunity here to be in a proactive state and really, really get ourselves combat ready and make sure we got our stuff sorted out. Um, and and uh, the good analogy that, that we have in the video coming up tomorrow night is, and it's, I think it's a good one, uh, we seem to find time on Friday night to get in the car and go buy a case of beer. And, and, and for most people, you know, it's something that you just do and it's habit forming, but you, but you truly made a choice to go do that. And... Do we do a good job as as people in EMS, as leaders of corporate, or just the human race? Do we do a good job of making some of that stuff happen? And do we just go and, and set aside an hour a week or two hours a week? And it doesn't have to be every week and it doesn't have to be every day. You know, lots of people go to the gym. There's lots of there's lots of things out there, but that's really where I'm seeing the paradigm shift for us. Yeah, to prioritize that. wellness. Yeah, yes. mental health is so important. It's, uh, I think one of the things too, just in my world for us is that once we went into this, so I had actually been dealing with rumors of COVID probably since the earliest of December, 70% of my associates that work for me um, usually are coming from an, uh, you know, an Asian background of some sort. So China, Hong Kong, Japan, whatever. So we had already started hearing about this already. Um, you know, as I actually had three beauty visors um, being tested as early as January for an unknown virus um, oh, or yeah. suspicious virus. So we had already been dealing with this. So we knew that we had to start preparing for this. And really when we got into the deep of things, so it was actually to Michael's point is communication we actually wanted to do we did these care calls so not only was the executive teams they took responsibility to check in one-on-one -on -one, and it was a virtual call with our beauty advisors or our staff just to make sure they were okay and some of them were really honest and saying how scared they were or you know, were they still going to get paid and all that kind of stuff. But in return, what ended up happening is they end up calling our customers and making sure they were checking in with our customers. So we were doing care calls. So it wasn't necessarily about, you know, making sure they had their moisturizer, um, you know, or their hand cream. It was more about, are you okay? Because these people have actually built these relationships, intimate relationships with these clients at a point, it's kind of like your hairdresser. Your hairdresser probably knows more about you than some of your friends do, right? No, we are like true. that. We, 
some of the things we know we probably don't want to know yeah <laughs> you know they have that, that we're 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 very intimate with them as far as, you know, in an intimate setting, um, as far as, you know, their skin, their problems, their concerns or whatever it's going to be. And so that was really something that we made sure that was really important that as a community that we were reaching out and doing care calls and ensuring that everyone was okay on the mental health piece of it, but also just to make sure, just to check in to show like, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, I really believe in this appreciative inquiry approach, you know, appreciate, grateful for, positive, and then there's inquiry, which is Jeff's beloved, you know, the data, the fact finding, the analytics, and gathering it, the inquiry. But when you put appreciative inquiry together, it's kind of like water, hot, you know, hydrating, there's hydrogen, there's oxygen, but together, there's this magic of hydration, appreciative inquiry together is like what you focus on grows and, and that power of positivity. But I also think a lot of success now and going forward can be looking at some past successes. You know, what's something that you're proud of, an obstacle, a roadblock, a tough time that you overcame and that what were those characteristics that you bring forward right here, right now? So like what's a, what's a past struggle and, and Jeff, I haven't given you the floor for a while, so I don't know if you want to be first or if anybody has something that comes to mind. Is there a past struggle that you're comfortable sharing on a Facebook Live? I don't mean for anybody to be overly vulnerable, but is there something? That's, you know, I, I did, um, you know, during the during the course of the transition while things were happening, um, you know, managing some personal issues and stuff like that. Uh, my mother-in-law had passed away. My father passed away. Uh, wow. There was just, it, it, it seemed like um, at some point everything was happening all at once. Um, I'm the I'm the type of guy that likes to be on time for my meetings. I like to deliver my deliverables. Yeah. Uh, right. And so I didn't realize that I was under duress and like really in a bad stress situation because for so long I I had internalized and just I'm strong I can take this right. Um, like I, I had I had booked a meeting to meet with a, a, a colleague uh, regarding a project. The meeting was at 10 a.m. I woke up at 7:30 and I was like I got lots of time. Got in the shower and this this was around the time where I started having difficulty getting out of bed. Right. And I didn't know what that was because normally alarm goes off. Hey, it's time for the yeah. day. Right. Yeah. But then I was kind of like, oh, I don't want to, you know, and I didn't recognize that that was the beginnings of anxiety and depression that, that were hitting me. Right. So I, I'm i showering. I'm walking out to my car. Now, remember, I got up at 7 30 in the morning. Yeah. I got to my car at quarter after 10. Like my, my car is like feet away from my head. Like, what happened between 7.30, getting into the shower, getting to my car, right? So I was in such a state, I didn't even realize. So as I'm getting into my car, all of a sudden my phone rings and it's the person that I'm supposed to be meeting with. And yeah. she's concerned because I'm 15 minutes late for a meeting when usually I'm early and I've got everything prepared and if there's printouts, it's good to go. And it was mortifying at the time, but I completely broke down on this call when she called me up and I was like, Oh my God, what's going on? How did I lose all this time? Like it was just, it was a terrible, terrible Scary. moment for me. Um, and so what she did is she recommended that I call the employee assistance program. And that's what I did. And that was the beginning of the, the help that I received through through Loblaw and Shoppers Drug Mart. It was really pretty incredible. Um, yeah. So I had some doctor recommended time off, saw a therapist. And so through, through this experience, what I, what I've recognized is, you know, if you've got a sore throat, you go to the doctor, you get it checked out. Why is mental health? Why is there such a stigma around it? I was struggling. I needed to, I needed an outlet and being able to speak to a professional that can guide you through that self-discovery on, on what maybe there's, there's issues there. You didn't even realize for me, I internalized, right? So now, I, you know, on the back end of this, I'm somebody that's much more comfortable speaking about my feelings. Uh, I think I'm much more genuine and real now yeah. than I ever have in, been in my life. Um, so for anybody out there that's struggling, even if you don't speak to a professional, find that friend, find a stranger, find somebody that you can talk to and feel safe talking to them, right? Yeah. It's so important yeah. to talk about those things. And, and a lot of the time, like I, I read something where People that go through this, it's not so much that they're weak, it's because they've been strong for so long yeah. that it, it, it's, it's kind of like a bag of uh, a bag of sand, 
right? A, a, a burlap, burlap bag can only hold so much sand. Yeah. And if you keep stuffing it, internalizing those emotions, the seams are going to break on that bag and the sand's going to be everywhere. You're going to be a mess. So it's best to address them and talk about them. And it's, so that's been my personal experience. I've been comfortable revealing this to people. It's not like it, it, it's not like a walk around preacher. Go see a therapist. But no, no, no. Up, then, then it's something that I feel it's a way for me to help that individual when I'm speaking to them by making them feel comfortable talking to a therapist right so that that that's been my experience and i i would say it's made me uh, uh, uh i've always been a positive guy but it's made me much more genuinely positive if that, if that makes sense so yes that's that's my my little experience with that uh, so i think mental health is really important and uh, it, it shouldn't be swept under the curb there. thank no. you for sharing jeff yeah we yeah, no, really I'll appreciate just, your uh, vulnerability these things happen and you, you just you know, I, I, I've I had colds. I've gone to the doctor for my medicine, right? And now I'm better. So congratulations to me for being over my colds too, right? Like it should be that that simple. It should be that basic. Oh my gosh. Like the, I was... the, mm -hmm. the stigma, I think, is the big thing. And it's probably even more prominent. You know, I'm still in a pretty male dominant area. Yeah. Uh, although we have some wonderful ladies that, that are part of our team. Um, it's that stigma and that breakdown of that stigma. Uh, for me, it was it was always being the yes man. I think that's a family trait for for me as well as in the industry. And and you just never said no. And and Tracy and I had this conversation many many years ago, and it's very similar to your to your bag story. I called it the backpack story. Yep. And you can only put so many rocks in it, and then that pack gets really really heavy that's or bursts at the seam. Yeah. But but I think one thing that we also need to realize is that when we dump that backpack as we like to say, or find a coping mechanism, there's still a few pebbles that stay in the backpack. It's never totally empty. So it does fill up a little bit quicker, a little faster. So, um, you know, we have to be, we have to be aware of that. And, and I too, I'm, I publicly admit it. I publicly admit it to my friends and my family. I'm very active when it comes to that. I seek EAP, I seek, you know, and I have a great bunch of friends and family that are in the industry, but I have no problem reaching out to the professionals. And, and I'm proud to say that I host and, and I'm adamant about our folks doing debriefs after tough calls and making sure they, uh, there's our fire world going off, sorry, <laughs> um, that uh, we make stuff happen. So yeah, totally, totally on board with what you have to say there. And, and EAP and employers, I think that's gonna be more and more prominent and I know we were reaching out even our people that were working remotely. So kudos to the companies that are that are realizing that and doing what they can for their employees. That's yes. Amazing. And Mustache Movember is also yes. in the vein of mental wellness, particularly for our, our men in the emergency responder world, our veterans, our firefighters, our emergency responders uh, as well. So definitely find you can see some of uh, Mike's fellow firemen and allies sharing the link to donate because of mental wellness and the importance of it. And Jeff, thank you so much for sharing that phenomenal story. Holy cow. So let's, let's lighten it up and say, has anything funny happened to you guys this week in business or with your family or with your kids or your neighbors? Um, there's always something funny. Uh, I, yeah, there's I, always something I, funny. Right? I, not, not so not so funny but interesting i i potentially was exposed to covid got tested and i'm negative so that's fun you know oh, that's yeah fun fine fun fact yeah well i'm glad you tested negative yeah so i'm, I'm technically in isolation right now but I, they, they to be me. safe yeah yeah just a uh, you know with my my mom and stuff fighting cancer it's it's probably best if i just stay safe but uh, yes uh, Yes, yes. So, well, sorry, that got more serious. We were supposed to be No, fun, no, right? but that's that's probably the only test you have ever been stamped negative on, Mr. <laughs> Power of Positivity, right? Like even when you uh, failed. So you could say, you know, never say never. Even even Mr. Power of Positivity had a negative result. <laughs> but this one was positive that you got a negative result. <laughs> yes, yes. It's a positive. It's just so great. <laughs> How about, I mean, Angela, you deal with people from all around the world. Most of you, look at that. Your staff, you knew of COVID coming so that you yeah. were reactive instead of, or proactive instead of reactive because you got an early warning with your international staff. Mm -hmm. uh, any any fun 
fun international stories or? Um, well, I wouldn't say international, but my son actually, so it's more personal. So my son um, graduated, actually he's graduating officially tonight from grade 12. Congratulations. Um, he actually finished uh, obviously grade 12 in COVID and he decided that he wanted to take um uh, I, I guess a leap year type thing and, and really just discover himself. He's 18. So my sister lives out West on the border of Alberta, BC. And so he drove out um, September 15th all by himself for four oh. days, took him four days to get out there. And he wanted to just take the time to explore and um, see a little bit different part of the country because he knew starting university would be very different this year. And so he, you know, He's very mature and wise uh, okay, his, and way beyond his years and decided Pardon? to do that. But he actually just started officially this week um, in a hospital that's okay. by right, my cool. sister as it. environmental one, which is actually cleansing and cleaning. And so he sent me a picture yesterday with him in his scrubs and he goes, Dr. Parnell. So I don't know if this future, you know, maybe holds. I have a doctor in the family. I'm not sure, Ooh. but um, he's absolutely loving it and loving um having just a different pace of life and different outlook and living in the mountains. He's, he's already snowboard. He's already been on the hill and, um, life's rough. Life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. That's amazing. Yeah. It's so great. So so we I've, have... I've got my, my boys are 21 and 18 as well. Oh, okay. Uh, we have, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. My we, oldest we guy is apprentice. <laughs> it's amazing, right? But my, my oldest guy is apprenticing to be an electrician. My youngest guy is doing the same. He's uh, he's taking a year to uh, discover himself. So. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Aww. And you know what? I'm okay with it. They're just way too young. My daughter's third year at university. Um, and surprising enough, she's well, she's at Guelph. But um, big surprise, she's taking business. So taking after her mother. She will tell you that she's not going to sell a lipstick in her life. But she's in business. So. <laughs> it's fabulous. And then, and Mike, you've got two girls in your life. How old are the girls now? Uh, Molly's in uh, university or first year university, and Lucy's uh, in grade ten. Yeah, so I have two two wonderful stepdaughters that are that are part of my life. And uh, obviously, you know, COVID going to university is different than it used to be, and so is high school. So, um, but but they are uh, that's something that we haven't put a plug in here for, and we probably need to. This next generation coming behind us, folks, they're a tough bunch, and they've really been tasked. And, and I'm sure Justin, uh, Angela's son tonight, he's he's doing a virtual graduation. But talk about somebody that went through their final year of high school and the highlights that they had and uh, what, what these kids are doing here now. It's a pretty tough time for them. Um, but they're taking it in stride, and, and they're doing well at it. And they're going to be our future leaders. They're going to be the us of tomorrow's. And uh, I see that as, you know, is our is a good thing. Absolutely, yes. so proud of them. So so proud of them, and they've so been so them. resilient. I've not. It's amazing. This this. I really hope this generation really understands how resilient they have been. So it's been great. They really have. And you know, before this, everybody had these conversations about why generation, and a lot of it was biases and assumptions yeah, uh, yeah. around why generation. But that whole they had it so good, so they don't know what it it's like to be tenacious and diligent and resilient and persistent. But I think, uh, I don't think there's any fears that they haven't got that figured out as a result of what's going on now. There's a, I'm doing a, I haven't accepted yet, but I'm being vetted for a TV show, whether I want to agree or not. And what it is, is these teams and we, over, we take on world problems like, end cancer or save the environment or help homeless, right? And these teams, and you get four days to solve how to end homelessness, for example, uh, financial disparity and these things. And what they do is it, because it's second season, we know, but in the first season, they sneak, they snuck in one team that were teenagers, brilliant, extra smart teenagers and they were they thrived and they were extraordinary and they kicked butt against these business gurus and public personalities for their their team initiative uh, at the time and so we never underestimate our youth because they are going to be the thrivers and survivors so people listening are, are here because they're so uh, respectful and enthusiastic about the people that Tracy defines as leaders. And, and if you haven't gathered, I think leaders need to be human and they have their own personal lives and their own obstacles, but that they are still 
a chief in fire, the uh, Mr. Uh, Super Social in analytics, right? Let's break those stereotypes that the analytics can't have uh, people personalities. <laughs> and our retail guru in beauty world, Angela. So is there a closing tip or two or three or an acronym, something that you want to say as your last closing sentence for thriving forward and propelling in 2021? Enough with 2020. Let, let's bring in 2021 that you want to have as a closing remark. And I won't say anybody's name because I'll let whoever feels ready to say something. Um, I can actually go. So I think the one big thing is, is I will say I've been humbled more than I ever have been in the year of 2020. Um, I value family and friends so much more even now than I ever have. And I think that's something that I will hold tight and close to my heart. And I'm not going to let that go um, going into 2021. So I'm making time for friends and family and continuing to be humbled and realizing that uh, we, we're, we're able to give so much, so much in it, just even a phone call or a check in, um, or just spending time with someone, a coffee. It's just been amazing. And so appreciative of all my friendships and, and my family throughout these times. So I'm going to definitely keep that going through 2021. Oh, uh, and Angela, and, and you did it with your customers of customers, I did. I like did. your internal <laughs> customers are your staff. And then your yep. external customers, your staff called like you, you lived this multiple layers. Yeah. Awesome. For, for us in the fire service, we, we, we often were challenged um, when we did something over a long period of time. And, and again, it's back to this youth that has come in. They start asking the why questions. And for many years, we said, well, why do you do it that way? Well, that's the way we've always done it. And that that was a recipe, I think, for any of us, um, you know, that was for disaster. So for me, 2020 is the reset year. 2020 is a chance to hit the power button, reset it into 2021 we've learned a ton of stuff yeah. but now the oddball query that someone has and the, the idea that you kind of look at and you know when you talk to a dog and they, and they turn their head they're really listening this is an opportunity for us to try some outside the box thinking do things that we haven't always done them and i see even through covid some of the processes and procedures that we have are now going to be you know i hate using the acronym the new norm but there are some things that are there so for me 2020 was a reset I'm excited for what 2021 has, and I'm ready to kick it. Yeah. And for, sorry, go ahead, Tracy. And, and we've got 20 likes and 17 watching for our fabulous <laughs> finale with Jeff from Loblaws. Please, before we close it out and we hear Jeff's closing words to put in the comments, loved watching. This was great. Make sure you like, please share. It would be massively appreciated, especially in our fundraising efforts for Movember. And so and I would just say as closing, yeah. yeah, just as closing comments, um, in all of your interactions, assume positive intent with the person you're dealing with oh, and wow. manage your own expectations of others' reactions, manage yourself, right? And wow. assume positive energy with people. And I oh. think that will go a long way to any conflict that you have, yeah. helping to resolve it with your relationships, everything. Focus on those two key points. And I, I think you'll have a much more enjoyable life. Well, Jeff, it was really opinion. nice meeting you, actually, because I know Michael very well. He's a family friend of mine, so he's actually <laughs> part of my bubble, in my COVID bubble. So, But, Jeff, it was very nice to meet you as well. Very so. very nice to meet you guys. Thank you so much. It was a real honor. Awesome. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks for inviting us, Tracy, and putting us together. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it really has. Yeah. blown away you guys were phenomenal as you always have been for all the years that i've known you and met you folks thanks for sharing your super fabulous selves with my world and uh folks do remember to donate uh michael's links uh his friends have been madly popping them in the chat so <laughs> tonight and uh, Michael is inviting us all. There's no cost. You get to go live on Facebook on Saturday. So how yep, seven to ten? Follow it through our through our Hamilton Township Fire Department. Uh, put a plug in there. Remember to find us. Uh, we're Sprinkler Heads. That's the name of our team. That's on uh, Movember. The link's been there specifically to uh, Hamilton Township. Uh, again, thank you. Stay humble and thanks for the invite. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. It's been thank great. You. Yeah, very enjoyable. Keep a big thank wave for everybody. <laughs> Woo! Take care. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. We've said bye, and I don't know how to hang up, so I'll just.